Independent games, or indie games as most folks call them, are getting more and more prevalent in recent years, with the advent of digital distribution platforms like the Nintendo eShop and Steam. In fact, for some it might be a bit too prevalent, and trying to sort through hundreds of games with varying quality can be a bit of a chore sometimes. But nevertheless, it's always relaxing to take a break from large AAA game releases and enjoy a smaller scale indie game, whether it has a unique art style, gameplay mechanic, or is simply a love letter to the games of yesteryear. There's lots to enjoy in the indie space, and honestly I don't understand people who just brush them off, or see them as always inferior to games made by AAA studios. I mean, bigger isn't always better. That being said, getting noticed in an environment where literally anyone can make and release a game of their own is admittedly quite difficult. Not every game can be a smash hit, but to indie developers, there is probably nothing more satisfying than seeing their successful games be appreciated by so many people, even when pitted against big budget efforts. And hey, why stop at having a successful digital game where you can flip that D upside down and turn it into a pigeon? F f f f f f wow, that joke did not work at all. Anyway, on this episode of Things of Interest, I want to talk about physical releases of indie games, specifically publishers that work with indie developers that produce limited physical copies of their games. As one of these publishers, the folks over at Super Rare Games, has kindly sent me this package for review. So hey, hashtag free product for the first time on this channel. This is one of their recent releases, which is Graceful Explosion Machine, a shmup game from Vertex Pop, originally released early in the Switch's life. Opening up a game like this is kind of new ground for me, as I previously haven't paid all too much attention to these limited edition releases. Mostly cause they're, well, limited. I'd have to order these online, and shipping something all the way to Hong Kong sometimes isn't too budget friendly. The limited distribution makes sense considering the smaller scales of indie games, but it does give them the opportunity to make these physical releases much more well packaged than your typical Nintendo or third party release. This particular game comes with a bunch of bonuses packed in, right after I'm forced to destroy this lovingly sealed package. Trust me, I tried to preserve that sticker. Right off the bat, you get a large super rare game sticker, which I presume comes with all the releases. There's even a pack of trading cards. We'll get back to those in a bit. And here it is, Graceful Explosion Machine. Labeled as the 33rd release by Super Rare, which I'm sure will give Switch collectors intense nightmares. Inside the box, you get, that's right, an instruction manual. Wow, aren't these a rare sight nowadays. I legitimately miss the days that Nintendo included physical manuals in their games, right up to the midway point of the 3DS's life. I get it's for saving the environment and stuff, but nowadays most Switch games don't even come with a digital manual like on the 3DS and Wii U. I just wanted something to read while on the toilet, man. At the very least, it's still good to see physical manuals still finding a home in these limited releases, where they can go all out on the stuff that has defined physical games for so long. Meanwhile, the trading cards are, yeah, cards you can trade, showcasing some nice artwork of enemies in the game. Apparently, I own cards 1, 2, and 5 out of the 5 total cards. Not that I have anyone to trade them with in Hong Kong, but I guess that makes me one of the, what, free people over here that has them? I guess that's neat. These trading cards seem to be Super Rare's whole shtick of physical bonuses. Their other releases, such as World of Goo and Snake Pass, also include similar cards. I'm curious to know if someone out there is actually trying to collect a full set of cards from all of their releases. Alright, it's probably time for me to talk about the actual game, at least for a little bit. I've never played Graceful Explosion Machine before this, but I've definitely heard good things about it before. And look at that, the version is up to date right out of the box. Guess this is another advantage of having physical releases. Even though this game in particular doesn't take up that much space, some indie games out there definitely do. And I'm glad that a few of them have went through the physical treatment so that our micro SD cards can be spared. Mostly. I need to upgrade soon again, don't I? Anyway, Graceful Explosion Machine. As mentioned before, it's a shoot 'em up game that almost has an arcade-like feel to it. The story can mostly be consolidated to you're lost in space fighting aliens. Well, okay, to be more specific, you have to travel across different planets to get a warp crystal stolen from your ship in order to return home. Still, story's not the main focus here. Each level takes place in a looping hallway where your main objective is to survive multiple waves of enemy aliens. The small fry's just home in towards you, but you also got folks that will lunge or fire at you. Your main weapon is a blaster that can be continuously fired but has a cooldown. So you also got other special weapons mapped to the face buttons, but they use up your energy meter, which can be refilled by picking up crystals left over from blasting enemies. So you have a nice little back and forth between spending energy to annihilate a horde of aliens with your weapons, and then rushing in to refill your meter before more of them show up. 
There's a close range energy sword for enemies surrounding you, a long range sniper beam that you'll need to blast these armored enemies, as well as homing missiles that are kind of a last resort when you're just faced with an overwhelming number of foes. It's just a really great feeling when you're almost cornered and then BOOM you unleash a ton of missiles and reap the rewards afterwards. And if you do find yourself surrounded with an empty meter and an overheating blaster, you can always dash out of trouble with the shoulder button. It lets you pass right through enemies but not their attacks, so don't use it all willy-nilly. Like I did sometimes. I suck. Right off the bat, it's apparent that this is an easy to learn but hard to master kind of game. Surviving the onslaught isn't all too difficult, there are checkpoints in between waves of enemies despite the limited lives you get. Getting a good score by chaining enemies through combos on the other hand is the real challenge. My first time through the first world was not my best performance. The best ranks in the game are obtained by chaining a full combo of enemies from start to finish. And clearly I am not prepared for anything close to that yet. Still, even though shoot'em ups aren't usually my kind of game, I did have a good time with this one. I enjoy indie games with simple premise but in-depth gameplay mechanics and this is definitely one of them. I can see myself returning to this for some quick intense sessions of alien blasting. And above all, it's just great that the devs got their game released physically in this form. It's pretty common to think of physical games as a realm exclusively inhabited by big budget games, but I bet everyone has that one favorite indie game that they love to get physically, if at least only as a sort of memorabilia. And different publishers like Super Rare have been making that happen. Their online store also has other well-known indie games for sale, while the physical stocks last of course. And as of recording the script, their latest releases include Old School Musical, a retro-style rhythm game, as well as the Steam World games, which I highly recommend. They're also selling booster packs with a trading card, something I just noticed while writing the script, nice. And that's about it for this nice physical release of Graceful Explosion Machine. You know, I'm just glad that these are an option at all. You could always just download these games on the eShop too if you're not big on the limited physical release thing. But I imagine decades in the far future when the Switch eShop is defunct, and even re-downloading digital games becomes a near impossible task, these can still be a viable legitimate way of experiencing these games. No game deserves to be left behind, and thank you to Super Rare Games once again for sending this my way. Now if you excuse me, I'll give this game its rightful place on my shelf of Switch games with completely mismatched box binds. 